Hello, welcome to Alyssa Jean's Top 10 Television Shows of 2023. Happy New Year, everyone. Can't believe 2023 is already at an end. Uh, so what I will be doing here is what I do every year, and I will be telling you my personal favorite Top 10 Shows of 2023. Now, as with every year, I always keep a running list throughout the year as I watch the show. I write it down, I give it a rating, and I rank it uh, amongst the shows that I've watched so far until at the end of the year, I have a complete list. Uh, in 2023, I watched 18 shows, which is down a lot from 2022, where I watched 32 shows. Uh, so quite a bit fewer, um, but it's a very similar uh, scenario uh, where... Um, my entire top 10 is an 8.5 rating or higher. Uh, and just as with last year, and also just as with last year, um, number seven on my list starts the nine out of 10 ratings. And my nine out of 10 ratings go up to number two. And only my number one gets a 10 out of 10 rating. This was the same thing in 2022. I didn't plan it this way, just happened that way again. Um, so to start off this video, uh, I am in just a moment going to give you uh, my numbers 18 through 11. It'll just scroll across your screen. It'll have the ratings in parentheses. I'm not going to um, go into any detail of any of them except for two of them I'll do honorable mentions for. Uh, so I'll go into a little bit of detail for my honorable mentions, and then I'll get into my top 10 before I get into any of that. However, um, just a little bit of housekeeping. I just want to mention some shows uh, that I had watched previous seasons of or previous incarnations of uh, and did not watch in 2023. So uh, real quick, um, Invincible Season 2 will not be on my top 18 anywhere. I did not watch it. It was my overrated show. Season 1 was of 2021. Um, I did not bother with season two, so you won't see that there, even though you've seen Invincible on a previous list. Uh, and then um, along those same lines, my most overrated show of 2022 was The Boys season three. The Boys had a spinoff called Gen V or Gen 5. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce Is that a Roman numeral? I don't know. I don't care. I am over The Boys. Um, most overrated show probably ever. I don't understand why people think this is quality. I did not bother watching Gen V. Um, so uh, you won't see that on anywhere on uh, my list. Uh, and then uh, another show I didn't watch, even though I, I've watched previous seasons, um, for very different reasons, and that is Rick and Morty Season 7. I do plan to watch it eventually. Uh, I uh, just I don't have... Uh, the means to watch it legally. <laughs> so in the past, I have pirated it, um, and I decided to not pirate it this year, i.e. my pirating site was not working, and I didn't feel like looking for a new one. I was like, it'll be on Max eventually, and I have Max, so I'll just watch it later uh, when it gets posted on Max. So I will eventually watch Rick and Morty Season 7, uh, but I did not watch it this year. Um, now I want to talk about one show I did watch that I have decided it's not eligible. So uh, I entered new territory this year. I watched a reality show. I never watched reality shows, but um, I was really curious about Squid Game, the challenge that they made that show into an actual reality show. I was super curious about it. Got super addicted, watched the whole season. Um, but I thought about, does, does that qualify? I mean, it's kind of apples and oranges. Then I thought about, I've also watched episodes of Jeopardy. Am I going to count Jeopardy on here? No. So, I mean, it's a game show. It's an elaborate game show. So uh, I've decided a uh, big NA for Squid Game, the challenge um, does not count. Um, and that will be the rule moving forward. Should I happen to ever watch a reality show again? And I don't ever watch reality shows. Um but should I happen to, again, I will not uh, include them in my top tens. And by the way, I do think I might still come back next year and do this. I know I've talked about I'm um, slowing down operations on my channel. I'm not going to do as much in 2024, but that doesn't mean I ne won't necessarily come back into a top ten. Uh, so if I do, um, and if I happen to watch another reality show, I probably will watch Squid Game Challenge Season 2, if I'm being real with you. <laughs> then uh, it was same role will not be considered um another rule um which doesn't really come into play this year but <coughs> i always count shows that um end within that calendar year 
So uh, if a show were, were to spill over into January of the next year, it wouldn't be eligible until the following year. But that actually didn't come up this year um, in either direction. I didn't have a show spill over from 2022, and I'm not having a show spill over in 2024. Everything was neat and trim this year. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead now, and I'll show you my numbers 18 through 11 across that screen real quick uh, with the rating and parentheses. Uh, and then I'll talk about a couple honorable mentions, and then I'll eventually get into that top 10 that I promised you in the title of this video. Okay, let's go. There you have it, my 18 through 11 with the rating and a 10 in parentheses. So I did want to briefly talk about two of those um, for my honorable mentions. Um, shows that uh, I did enjoy but just didn't make it into my top 10. Uh, and basically my numbers 12 and 11 that you just saw there. Uh, so first honorable mention, uh, for the second year in a row, I'm giving an honorable mention to Winning Time, Rise of the Lakers Dynasty, this time for Season 2. Uh, and uh, this will be the last year that I give an honorable mention to this show, as it has been canceled. And I'm disappointed in that. I really enjoyed this show as a fan of the NBA. I found it entertaining. The acting is good, John C. Riley, especially. Um, it's got this... Uh, Adam McKay style to it that I really enjoy. I enjoy the different uh, things that he does with the episodes and the editing. And uh, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, and I, uh, I've gotten tired of seeing on my uh, YouTube feed, like all these videos that were like, this is not how Pat Riley really was. Oh, this was wrong. Winning time had it wrong. Like nobody thinks it's a documentary. It's fictionalized it even says so at the beginning of the episodes everybody knows it's fictionalized just chill out um <laughs> i wish I, the laker people or, or the nba purist or whoever like who are um pushing these videos just like fucking chill out it's it's nobody thinks that that's exactly what happened although there is a lot of truth in it too but we understand it's not really like how exactly how everyone behaved and um, although again, there is some truth in there, but it's fictionalized. Just chill out. Uh, I found it very entertaining, um, as a fan of basketball and, um, disappointed that it's not coming back. Um, and by the way, I gave this an eight out of 10 rating, which I believe is also what I gave season one. Uh, next honorable mention, um, is one piece season one. And up until a few days ago, this was in my top 10, um, but then along comes a certain animated Marvel show that decided to air all their shows right at the end of the year, ending on December 30th, uh, which you'll now see in my top 10, um, and it knocks One Piece right on out of my top 10, and it previously... Um, was clinging to that 10 spot, but now it is just an honorable mention. This is a show that I, um, coming into, have no clue about. I had never remotely even heard of One Piece before. Um, I just saw that uh, other people were watching it, um, so I decided to check it out. I really did not expect to like it, um, but I was surprised that I did end up liking it. Uh, I think that you just got to... Um, go in with the mindset that this is a live action anime. It's going to be campy. It's going to be silly. The vi the villains are going to be one dimensional, um, but it's okay. Uh, the one word that I would use for this show is fun. This show was a lot of fun and it's a feel good show. It's got a great message. It's about friendship and bonding and coming together and like standing up for your friends. And um, Luffy is a really fun character. Um, at the beginning of the show, like uh, none of the characters believe in him because he seems crazy. He's like, I'm going to be king of the pirates. And they're like, you're crazy. You're just some stupid kid. And the audience feels that way too. Um, if, if you've never read the material or seen the material before, um, the audience feels that way too. And then by the end of it, he sells you and the, the characters. And it's a feel good show. It's fun. I quite enjoyed it 
Uh, shame it doesn't quite make it into my top 10. All right, so and now finally we get to the shows that did actually make it into my top 10. So uh, let's go ahead and start with my number 10 show of 2023 and count down to my number one show. All right, we start with my number 10, The Last of Us, season one with an 8.5 out of 10 rating from me. So uh, much like with One Piece, this was something a lot of people were getting excited about and I had never remotely heard of it before. I'm not a gamer, so I don't know The Last of Us, didn't know what it was, uh, but I came into it with an open mind and in the beginning I was kind of underwhelmed like everyone else was talking about how this was the best thing they've ever seen in their lives and I was like eh. um but uh it did really step up in episode three and then I feel like odd number of episodes for a little while were really doing it for me uh and then that finale the way they closed off the season was excellent a really powerful show well acted show um, despite the fact that it's set in this zombie type setting, which is not my favorite genre, um, but it was very little about the zombies, honestly. It was more about the characters, and that's why I loved this show a lot, and that's why it makes my top 10 show list for 2023. <laughs> Coming in at number 9, Star Wars The Bad Batch, Season 2 with an 8.5 rating. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, this happened so long ago that I kind of forget a lot about it. But what I do remember is uh, that I did enjoy Season 2 a little more than Season 1. Uh, I like the character stories a little bit more. I uh, loved some of the really heartfelt moments. There's a particularly sad moment about a particular character. Um, no spoilers. Um, in the latter part of the season. Um, and it ends on a cliffhanger that I'm interested in. I want to see where these characters go. Uh, I want to see what happens in this time period. And I don't know that they're going to live because we never see them <laughs> or hear about them. Uh, in the Rebels era, even. So, um, really curious what happens in Season 3, which will be the final season of the show. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they did a great job with The Bad Batch's second season. So it's number 9 on my list. Number 8, number 8, number 8 is really great. Staying within the realm of Star Wars, my number eight is Star Wars Ahsoka, season one. This is one I had higher hopes for. I was expecting and hoping it to be one of the best shows in 2023. And two of the episodes lived up to that expectation. Uh, episodes four and five, I think, were kind of near masterpieces. And two of the best episodes in all of Star Wars television. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, it did get a little uh, mediocre after that, and I was a little disappointed in the finale. However, overall, still loved the show, still give it an 8.5 out of 10 rating, and it still lands in my top 10 at number 8, and I really hope we do get a season 2. At number seven, Black Mirror season six. I know there is a lot of a mixed opinions on Black Mirror because they deviated greatly from the previous format. They were branching out and trying different things. Now there was a couple episodes that were more traditional Black Mirror episodes. Uh, Particularly the first episode of the season definitely reminded me of a previous Black Mirror season episode. Uh, but then they branched off and did the space episode and the the, the um, horror film episode and the werewolf episode uh, and uh, all those different things. And uh, it, it was interesting seeing uh, how everyone liked each particular episode and which ones they liked and didn't like, and there was a lot of variation within that. Um, but for my part, 
I overall loved this season. I love that they're doing different things. I wouldn't want them to do the same things in season seven, I, but I would expect them to do new different things. Uh, and I love it. I love that the show is evolving. Uh, I think that the risks that they took paid off for the most part. Uh, the only one that I really didn't like was that werewolf one, which most people didn't like, unless you're my brother. <laughs> but I think the majority of fans did not like that one. Um, but uh, other than that one, I thought they really knocked it out of the park in uh, season six. And uh, that is why it makes up to number seven. And by the way, my first nine out of ten rating in my top ten. Get your kicks at number six. At number six, What If, season two, the show that started streaming on December 22nd and streamed one episode at a time until December 30th and came on in and knocked One Piece right out of my top 10 and claimed the number six spot with a nine out of 10 rating. Uh, kind of similar to what I just said about Black Mirror, this show was trying different things and I loved it. Uh, they were departing from the normal formula of let's just do a what if the Hulk killed Wolverine? What if T'Challa became uh, Star-Lord? Uh, where there are more abstract what ifs uh, to the point where uh, the trigger event that, ca that caused the change in reality was not usually the title of the episode. Because uh, it wasn't necessarily about the trigger event. It was about these different stories. And I love the introduction of this uh, new character, uh, Kahora, I want to say her name was. Uh, completely new to the comic books as well. Just a completely new character. And I love that What If is uh, and Marvel Studios are brave enough to try something new like that. And that really paid off. And freaking loved Captain Carter in this season. She is the face of What If now. This is her show and you couldn't have a better lead character for What If uh, and moving into season three. So really love this season a lot and I will be talking more about it uh, with my brother Mark from Enchantment of Eternity over on his channel on Monday, January 8th. I believe it's six o'clock West Coast time, so go check that out. Um, in the meantime, I now have to move on to my number five. Number five. At number five, Star Trek Lower Decks season four. Down one spot from where I had season three. And uh, even though they both have a 9 out of 10 rating, I did like season 3 slightly more. It had one of my favorite episodes of all time, and here I'll trust nothing, and season 4 didn't have anything quite that great for me, but it had a lot of really good character episodes, and of course, really funny moments, really funny parodies as Lower Decks always does. It had gags and it didn't, that didn't work for me. I didn't love the Mark Twain thing personally, uh, but they can't all be winners. Uh, I did love the Talin episode uh, with the Beta Z women. That's one of my favorites. Uh, I love what they did with Mariner at the end of the season. I loved that episode nine. Uh, so overall, even though maybe not quite as good as season three for me, still a nine out of 10, still pretty great and still in my top five of 2023. Number four, woo! At number four, Our Flag Means Death, season two. So who would have thought that I would have two shows in 
this video that I would consider silly pirate shows. I never thought the silly pirate genre would be something that I would be into. Oh, but this, of course, is a different kind of silly pirate show than One Piece. Uh, this is a comedy. Uh, this is a show about incompetent pirates where everybody is just absolutely silly. Um, but that's not what I love about this show. Uh, that's kind of what season one was, was kind of a bunch of incompetent pirates, and I didn't feel like the characters really gelled. And I feel that season two is objectively superior to season one in every way, and it boggles my mind that I have heard the opposite opinion, that people didn't like season two as much. I mean, to each their own, I don't relate to that opinion at all. I think this is objectively better. Uh, the characters have better chemistry. Uh, it's funnier, and most importantly to me, it is way more queer. Like, I feel like toward the end of season one, they were starting to test the queer waters, maybe dip their toes in a little bit. Uh, but then in season two, they're like, let's just go all in on the queer. There is a scene, uh, I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it, but it involves the guy who used to play Hodor in Game of Thrones in, uh, I believe it was like episode six, that is phenomenal. I loved it so much. Uh, this show would be even higher on my list if not for the one red mark against it, which is early on in the season, they have a storyline with a uh, male character basically um, submitting to his uh, sexual harasser and liking it. And that is problematic in so many ways. Uh, fortunately, it was a short-lived storyline. It wasn't very important in the overall scheme of things. Um, but it does hold it back from being even higher on my list. This could be up at number two, if not for that storyline. Also, I need to mention the new character, Susan, the uh, pirate queen, freaking amazing. Loved, loved, loved this season, even with that one red mark against it, it is still fantastic and makes it to number four in my top 10. The Three Amigos, number three. At number three in my top 10 for 2023, The Wheel of Time, season two. Another show that I think was uh, improved in the second season. Uh, now I am caught up on the books, so I did really appreciate this as an adaptation, though they obviously changed a lot. If you've read the books, you know, uh, there's a lot of details that are vastly different. They still follow the main beats of the books and they hit upon all the things that I really wanted them to hit upon and they did an excellent job of it. And I really love the finale personally. A lot of people are crapping on the finale, but I thought it was one of the better finales that I have actually seen in a while. Uh, so I uh, think this is an underrated fantasy show. In fact, this landed as my most underrated show of 2023 and another video that I did. Uh, but I definitely cannot wait for season three and I'm really enjoying continuing to read the books as well. So, The Wheel of Time Season 2, number 3 in my top 10. Two of Hearts, a number 2. At number 2, for the second consecutive year, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Uh, season 1 was number 2 in 2022, and Season 2 is number 2 in 2023. Uh, with another 9 out of 10 rating. And maybe this is surprising to some people because I feel like season 2 got shat upon a lot. And I can understand why uh, they tried a lot of different things. And I think uh, not all of them landed for people. Uh, I'm thinking particularly of that musical episode uh, that uh, had very mixed reviews. People hated it people loved it. I'm kind of more in the middle on that episode, um, but I know people's opinions were all over the map. Kind of reminded me of what I said uh, about Black Mirror, where there were vastly uh, different opinions about which episodes were good and which were not, because uh, Strange New Worlds, again, like What If and Black Mirror, was trying new things, and I think for the most part, uh, they really nailed it. In particular, 
with the time travel episode that not everyone loved, but I did. And I love overall what they did with Paul Wesley's Kirk. I uh, love Paul Wesley as Kirk. I love his uh, relationship with uh, uh, Leon Noonien Singh and how the timey-wimey stuff was involved in all of that. Not just in that one episode, but all throughout the season. And of course, this had the best crossover episode in Star Trek history uh, with the Lower Deckers coming over into live action and it was beautiful, it was fantastic, it was sweet and because of those reasons Strange New Worlds despite what other people might think to me is on par with season one and just like season one is a number two in my annual top 10 TV show list. And now, now, the number, the number one, one show, show of, of 2023. 2023. And my number one show of 2023 is Loki Season 2 with a 10 out of 10 rating. The only show of 2023 that I gave a 10 out of 10 rating to. Um, and I gave it this rating because of the timey-wimey stuff, of course. I love that really complicated timey-wimey stuff that makes your brain hurt. That is the best. Um, but more importantly than that, the character development. Uh, I love where they took Loki's character. I won't spoil it in case you haven't seen it yet. And you haven't seen it yet, you should definitely watch it uh, but uh, he really comes a long ways from uh, where he started in season one because remember in season one he's coming from a timeline where he just fought against the Avengers and the Avengers film uh, and he finds what really means the most to him as his friends and I love that realization and there are some great scenes between him and Sylvie toward the end uh, and of course the finale was spectacular uh, so Loki season two the best show of 2023 between Loki and what if I feel like Marvel is starting to make a little bit of a comeback hopefully maybe it's it's coming back a little especially with the Disney Plus shows Anyways, that does it for my top 10 as Loki season two is number one for the year. And there you have it, my top 10 shows for 2023. Thank you so much for watching. And once again, happy, happy new year. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful 2024. Uh, and... Uh, I won't be doing as much on my channel in 2024, but uh, I'll pop in occasionally and say hi. And who knows, maybe I'll do another one of these next year. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for so much for supporting my channel and subscribing. Um, and uh, I will see you very soon. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.